it's been a long time since I did an update uh, video wise I'll go ahead and show you guys what I've been doing um, progress on the pontoons a little bit slow just because it's down on the priority list I'm trying to wrap up the Jeep and I've got a few things on my gate and a few other odds and ends of spring but um, hopefully here beginning of the summer we'll get back to actually uh, messing with the pontoon which would be a good time to do it I can fiberglass outside don't have to worry about the fumes that kind of stuff and in case you're curious what I've been up to this is the little Jeep I bought that I'm in the process of redoing that's going to be our beer hauler for the uh, the lake so that's kind of why it's a priority get it done before summertime and uh, so I can use it to haul ice test to the dock and more importantly the Admiral so what I've been up to was I made <coughs> actually I didn't make I cut out this piece of MDF and what the whole goal of this thing is is to try to figure out the best way or whether I could actually use this for a mold for uh, the shape of the um, sides on the pontoon. I've never done any kind of molding of fiberglass before um, so I wanted to go ahead and kind of experiment. So what I did with this this is just run-of-the-mill MDF. Um, I sanded it real lightly and then put about four coats of lacquer sealer on it. Uh, this is lacquer sealer just like you'd buy at the paint store to use on your furniture or woodwork at the house. Um, I didn't sand things down really well. I mean, I, I just kind of sort of lightly sanded the surface on the MDF. And then, of course, as you put the lacquer on, you sand between coats. Um, and I really didn't sand that much because I wanted to kind of see what the worst case scenario would be or what it would look like if I really didn't try. Uh, when we actually build the mold, of course, I'm going to try to slick it up as best as I can. But just trying to get an idea of what would happen. And the other thing is I read a lot of uh, things about you can't use lacquer, you could use lacquer. So that was sort of the uh, part of this process to determine whether we could or couldn't use it lacquer for a sealer. Because, you know, this stuff here is like $15 a gallon uh, versus some of the uh, commercial fiberglass mold sealers I've seen that are $150. They're epoxy based. So this is a one-time use deal. So I decided, you know, let's try it and see if it works. So I cut this out. Put a couple coats on there, sanded between coats. I waxed it up real good. And the first layup I did, I by the way, I used um, fiberglass sites, uh, laminating resin, and then I used uh, U.S. Composites neutral gel coat. And I, I bought a little kit that had all their different colors. I've been using black on this because black will uh, show the imperfections. If anything shows imperfections, black will. So this was our first attempt, or my first attempt. I just laid up a full sheet. Um, this is 1.5 chop strand uh, followed by a layer of woven roving. I think it was 16 ounce if I remember correctly. Another layer of 1.5 chop strand and then another layer of roving. And I don't know if you guys can see this. It's a mess around the shop by the way, but it's really stiff. And I mean, I think this is more than enough uh, to do what I want to do as far as just putting the side on the boat. It's mainly aesthetic. Um, the one thing about this that, that happened, I, you can kind of see it in the reflection, the roving telegraph through. You know, I had a boat that was that way uh, as a kingfisher. In a couple of places you could always see the roving in it. It wasn't this bad, but if you looked at it in the light, right, excuse me, light, right light, I can't talk today, you could see it. Um, so, you know, I decided to do some experiments. My second experiment was this, which is a little bit dirty. Um, and if you look on the back side, it's actually three different layups. And this first one here, I did an ounce and a half, an ounce and a half chop strand, and then I did the 16 ounce, and then an a, uh, ounce and a half, and then a 16 ounce. So basically, it was two layers of chop strand, roving, chop strand, and roving. Then you can still see it telegraph through. This one here in the middle was an ounce and a half, and then a two ounce layer of chop strand, and then the roving, then the ounce and a half, and then the roving. And it's better, but you can kind of see the, the difference. Actually, I say that, I don't know if you can on the camera. And the last one I did was an ounce and a half 
and then two layers of two ounce all chop strand and then the final layer was just a 16 ounce rover and it came out the best <clears throat> but quite frankly you can see the um, chop strand so I, th I think what's happening here um, is I've just brushed on one layer of gel coat and I just don't think that's enough gel coat I think that's why we're getting the telegraphing so we're going to try some more experiments uh, one other thing I wax this real good and then I put PBA on it and built it up I can't remember how many coats about six but when I did the second layup the PBA actually come off it's pretty wild stuff it just kind of looks like a trash sack um, but it came off on, on that coat so I think what I'll do is go ahead and re-wax this, put some more PVA on it, clean it up, and then try it again um, and put a couple of coats of the gel coat on there. Um, I know brushing it's not the correct technique, but I don't have a gel coat gun, so this thing is ultimately probably going to get painted anyhow, so I'm not sure that that's necessarily really critical, but that's the update for right now, kind of where I'm at. Um, like I said, as the uh, next few months roll on, hopefully we can focus a lot more on this and, and develop it and, and learn from it. Um, really looking forward to trying to do something cool with the boat. Talk to you guys soon.